2017 trip to Japan. This is uh, the first time I think we've really documented uh, everything that we've got. We did come in underweight and didn't have extra baggage. So I'd say this time we actually got the least amount of stuff, uh, but definitely more boxed games and consoles. So I'm going to go through as best I can all the different items, uh, you know, if they're new, what sort of condition they are and current pricing. So yeah, everyone can see the, the stuff. <clears throat> PC Engine, we didn't have one, so we have grabbed some games for that. The PC Engine console, where is it? Oh, there it is. We got at Trader for 116. So that was actually a pretty good deal. Then I think I only got one uh, Sega Saturn game, PS1 games. So actually some really good titles in here. This one's awesome. This one was a dollar find in the bin. And oh sorry, I do have two Sega Saturn games. I did get Space Invaders. It was 324. It looks really cool. So I thought I'd get that. Uh, soundtrack for Metal Gear Solid. X6. Theme Aquarium. Power Rangers. Beavis and Butthead game. Pac-Man World. Salamander. And Silent Hill, which was 324. So from the PS1, PSP games, Metal Slug Complete for PS2, a set of memory cards, which is a really good deal, two PS2 sealed memory cards, VHS in the dollar bin, super cool. And the story about the uh, VHSs is we were at the same hard off the previous year in November and they had the laser discs for Back to the Future 1 and 3, but they had uh, two for $40. And a year later, they put this in the junk bin, so we got that for 108. Then we moved to probably uh, stay with just going in, in a line here. Uh, we've got some Famicom games that I did not have. I overpaid for this one. I really shouldn't have, but the condition's really good. So I don't know if that was a good idea or not, but I'm home now and I've done it. GBA games. I had two, but I didn't have one and two. Uh, sorry, one and three. So I've got those ones now. And this is actually a pretty pricey game. This was the cheapest I'd found it on the whole trip. So instead of paying like $120 on eBay for it, I thought, why not get it? Um, it converts to about $60 or something like that, maybe a bit less Australian. Then the Game Boy. These are all really cheap titles. This one I needed. Um, I did overpay for this one as well. It was much cheaper at other stores, uh, but the condition, again, is really, really nice. Kirby Metroid. It does have a little stain down the bottom of it, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to clean it up. That was another good find. And look at that artwork. That was from Beep. I didn't think that was a bad price at all for that game. GBA Famicom Mini Games. All titles that I didn't currently have. Game Boy Color, both the Zeldas. These are really pricey in Australia. They're about $100 each, so I wasn't going to do that. I'd get the Japanese copies. This was in another junk section. Um, doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it, and it doesn't say it was missing anything. So I will be playing that on GameCube. Fortunately, I didn't get much Nintendo 64 stuff. I am trying to finish the Mario parties in uh, the Japanese format. Uh, I have a couple left to go. 
I have this as a cartridge, but I really thought the artwork's super cute, so I wanted to get the box. And I also had this game as a cartridge, but for five bucks, I wanted to get it boxed. The only other N64 item I did happen to find on the trip is the Midnight Blue or Grape controller box. It is absolutely pristine condition. I did do an Instagram photo on that one. I think it was 3400 in Japanese yen, and uh, yeah, it was a good deal. Next is the Super Famicom games that I got. Which are all pretty good, fun titles. And one Mega Drive game. I really have different Mega Drive games uh, that I collected over the years of going, but I had sold them off because I wasn't intending on ever buying a Mega Drive console. But on the trip, these were absolutely beautiful condition and good price. And we didn't have a Mega CD 2. We do have a Mega CD 1. So we thought we'd get the Japanese one. And then I will add a small catalogue of games recommended by other gamers. So if there's anything you think I should play for Mega Drive that are exclusive Japanese or something like that, that would be awesome. Because I definitely give them a play. Uh, what else? Sega. Sega Mouse. The This Is Cool Clear Sega Saturn Controller, which is the first time I'd ever seen that. And also, we will get to it, but the Regulation 7 Dreamcast. thing is pretty cool. Alright, back down to... Let's do the Virtual Boy games. These happen to be at Friends and they've said that they are new. I have found that when I've bought items from them in the past, they actually have been new. This one was a hard off. That was a hard off as well and it was a bit ripped. But you can tell the price of this one was $540. But when I went to Friends, I bought a brand new one for $600. So I think that um, Akihabara prices uh, can be hit and miss of course but they're not actually too bad so I've added a whole catalogue to the virtual boy and as I get to the end of my collecting of bigger items that I've wanted um, one of them was the virtual boy that I, need, I wanted to get this trip I was lucky enough to come across one at a really good price at a hard off the box does have a little bit of damage on one side, but it's pretty it's okay considering I've bought worse things in different formats and been happy with them. So yeah, a big catalogue of Virtual Boy games and also having a Virtual Boy. I've just got to work out how I'm going to display it and use it. I, I just can't wait, even though it's going to be a migraine centre for me. Um, I, I am really looking forward to it. Then down to the handhelds, oh sorry, one more Sega thing, uh, the Dreamcast Millennium Boxed Controller. That was also another good deal. That was $15.80. Yes, it has some yellowing, but that was at a Super Potato in Akabukuro. Uh, I think that was a good deal. You just got to look for them. Further to my other steals of the trip is the Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Center Game Boy Color. And it's the pearl white. Absolutely beautiful. The other one is the clear Jusco Game Boy Color. And the last one is something I've wanted so much. It is the Lawson's clear and white transparent back Game Boy Color. I uh, will do videos on that, dedicating on all three of these. They will get played as well. I'm so happy to have them. Uh, they're ones that I really wanted. The other one, uh, DS Lights, that I happened to come across was another Pokemon Center one, a Gundam one, and a Final Fantasy one. The DS Light uh, Pokemon Center was about $23, and the other two were about $88. Then I come across a purple Game Boy Micro. This one was purchased for a friend of mine uh, that I made on Instagram. So if he doesn't want it or for whatever reason 
uh, I will probably just keep it because it is really nice condition. Another item from finishing my collection that I wanted to get was uh, pretty much a complete set of the Famicom accessories. Uh, so I did find a disc system. Unfortunately, I overpaid for this one as well. It was 9800 at Trader and it could have got it in at Friends for, I think, uh, 7000 So I paid, overpaid for that one. These things happen. I was impatient. I thought I wouldn't find another one on the day and I could have easily found multiple ones. The guns were great deals. This one was a junk section $1.08 find. This was a trader find for $4, complete with the game. The semen for Dreamcast is complete with the microphone. That was another dollar fine. And this is a super cute Tamagotchi that's brand new, so we couldn't say no to that. The pocket station and game set. A recycled PS1 with the O-N-E. Uh, that was from Super Potato as well. Not bad price, I don't think. A debugging station, which Retro Gamer Guy, I imagine, is going to go through, maybe open up and do some videos on as well. This is a test, a test PS2 console. Um, it does come in this type of packaging, and uh, the serial number does match on the box and on the back of the console. Then going through was another Dreamcast find. These things get pretty pricey, so we weren't going to leave it there. I think it was $10 or something like that. A data recorder for the Famicom. It's pretty cool. Final Fantasy set. I'm not quite sure what is complete in this package. It is Retro Gamer Guys, so he will have to do something on it. From the junk section, I was able to find a memory card holder. For all the different colors for ps1 that's really nice and really neat as i just skimmed over before the mega drive and the mega cd2 both in good condition this was about 218 this was about 88 dollars and this is just um yeah it looks brand new it's it's not but it it's amazing how good a condition these consoles are looked after and from there is the <clears throat> Regulation 7 Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is something that I hadn't intended on really collecting as much, but I do have the Hello Kitty one and another plain release of the console. This looks absolutely beautiful inside. Everything is complete. The console has no marks. If anything, it almost appears to be new, but just with a lot of box wear. And uh, we are both very happy to have found this. I think it was probably about $170, maybe $180 Australian. But overall, this was what we were able to find this trip. More videos and stuff will come. So uh, stay tuned. Oh, one more thing. Yep, I did forget one more thing, which was Retro Gamer Guys Gran Turismo exclusive to Japan release of the PSP. It is the Gloss Piano Black. I think that's um, the right way of saying it. It's a very nice console with the logo down there on it. It wasn't a bad price. Um, PSP 3000. I think it ended up being probably just under $80 for us to pick this one up. It's a good little portable, which we were using over there, and uh, having something that is limited edition is a good addition, like good add-on to the rest of the collection of PSP stuff that he has. So this is our stuff from October 2017 Japan trip, and we'll have more videos to come soon.